Hi, right, Kalpun Piso here. Warning Americans of the danger of religious psychosis or believing God. Christophrenia, believing in resurrecting zombies as reality. Everything is produced by the brain. There's three ways you can produce it. Believing God. Number one is ignorance. That's very easy to cure. You hit the books. Number two is the ingestions of entheogens, which is psychotropic substances uh, like LSD and some other ones. All religions were created that way 5,000 years ago by the ingestion of entheogens. And number three is, uh, is a neurological disorder, malfunction of the brain, like schizophrenia, schizotypal disorder. That's it when you create God. Here are drugs like LSD. 60 times in the course of his treatment for alcoholism and depression. But not all those evaluating the drug were interested in no, babies. Were interested in the 1960s as a, as a religious sacrament. LSD, of course, we're talking about. Right. Had been embraced 10 years earlier, maybe even 15 years earlier, by the Central Intelligence Agency, by America's spy agency. Not as a sacrament, but as a weapon. Let's not forget that Christianity infected America share many things with Christianity infected Nazism, which is another branch of Christianity. Inspired by records of Nazi brainwashing experiments from the Dachau concentration camp, the CIA initiated an intensive exploration of LSD's potential as a truth serum and mind control agent. One of the things that the CIA was interested in, in terms of their research with drugs and other behavior modification techniques was this idea of a Manchurian cannon to go out and kill somebody, sort of on their automatic pilot conditions. If you know. Whether they actually did this sort of thing, we don't know. The documents are cut off at a certain point, uh, but it's very clear that they were... Uh, the but it's therapeutic very clear community, were... the CIA, and the U.S. military were all sponsoring LSD research programs at universities and hospitals across the country. Yeah, the air got of the Middle LSD Ages. Legally at UCLA the first fire. time, and it was with somebody next to me who I knew, who I felt was taking care of me, I didn't have to worry about anything, and it was really quite interesting. Researchers had long fretted about the consequences of a hallucinogen as powerful as LSD slipping out of clinically controlled settings and into the wrong hands. Well, LSD is nothing more than a fungus of yeast, ergot, called Clavices purpurea, that infected bread during the Middle Ages. People uh, ate that bread and they saw God and all that, and they call it San Antonis fire. That psychology professor Timothy Leary was conducting touchy-feely group experiments with right. the drug, yep. and that LSD-laced sugar cubes were circulating free. Were circulating drug free. Or people who are pushing LSD. Uh, we're not concerned with the drugs. We're mainly concerned with man's head. How can we use our own head? Uh, that's our person. Our own head. Leary that's himself our person. had trouble keeping his hands off the merchandise, chemical <laughs> or otherwise. He was once quoted as saying that. In a carefully prepared, loving LSD session, a woman will inevitably have several hundred orgasms. Leary's high-profile antics earned him the title of the Pope of Dope. Of the Pope of Let's Dope. Let's forget, in ancient times, all religions were created by the ingestion of antigens, and also had sex, which was sacred. And of course, you know, many chemicals produce this little horniness. <laughs> make you really turn on. So they thought it was from the gods. It happens today. Sage. He was initially exposed to LSD as part of a government experiment uh, through the Veterans Administration, which ultimately means the U.S. Army. They were Tillians, and Ken Kesey was part of a civilian experiment. Psychiatric patients on the ward served as the inspiration for his critically acclaimed novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. With profits from the book, Kesey transformed himself into the Johnny Appleseed of acid, determined to sow the psychedelic experience in as many receptive minds as possible. Human being had a right to have this kind of experience. Human society had Yeah, the ancient, the ancient Rome, they did drugs all the time. All the religions have drugs. All of them. But there was a hit. Sacraments. It was difficult to obtain. And to turn people on in the numbers Kesey had in mind required enormous quantity. Tubes. 
they concentrate it down and crystallize it. So we can get very pure material that way. Study the effects of its molecular structure in the brain. We think that it activates a type of brain receptor that's known as a serotonin 2A receptor. That receptor is actually located on cells in the frontal cortex and is involved in the computations that, that help us to visualize and interpret the reality around us. Religious folks are too retarded to understand that the brain is the creator of thoughts and God and all the delusions and sickness. And this is a fact. God does not exist outside the brain. We created it with chemicals. Transmitter responsible for relaying signals between brain and nerve cells. Perception, emotion, appetite, and sleep are all affected by its fluctuations. And fits almost like a key into the serotonin receptors. The LSD does. Yeah. Stimulating their activity, subtly or profoundly. What we know about the brain is because of science. In other words, you have to be an atheist, a mentally healthy person to understand this. Not to be infected with the delusions of God and all the retarded beliefs. Then the world is open to all of us. And if you have an end, then you have anxiety. So there had to be a concept inculcated within the brain itself that there is something out there that goes on forever. And if you somehow relate to it and can be a part of it, the idea of anxiety becomes a non-event. Exactly. Dr. Persinger believes the efforts of our brain's right temporal lobe to relieve the anxiety of death is what we sense when we think we are sensing the divine. Exactly. Exactly. And he's designed his God helmet to produce that sense. Exactly. Of the brain does that, invents God, because it fears of death. Yeah. Okay, I'm about ready to come in, just relax. For one hour, Dominica has been shut inside the chamber without light or sound, alone with her thoughts. Yeah. Great and brain. Perhaps also with God. Yeah. Great God with the brain. Exactly. Exactly what she's doing. And it says you felt the presence of something. Yeah, there's like other things around me. Okay, can you describe them? Not, they're just bodies of nothing. Not okay. doing anything, just, just chilling. How, how many were just chilling? <laughs> um. She actually counted them, did you see her move her hand? Yeah. She was actually recreating it. Yeah. More than 80% of Dr. Persinger's subjects, whether they are religious believers or not, sense a presence from the God helmet. Exactly. The, the temporal right lobes. Being stimulated, she felt the presence of things around her. Infrasound was the same thing, too. Entities that were faceless. Yeah. ...with seizures originating in the temporal lobes have intense religious auras, intense experience of God visiting them. God, sometimes it's a more diffuse feeling of being one with the cosmos. Everything seems suffused with meaning. The patient will say, finally, I see what it's all really about, doctor. I really understand God. I'm God, and then I had heaven and hell in my eyes. That was it, you know what I mean? I was the, the grand guy who created heaven and hell. For essentially an electrical storm in his temporal lobes, when a group of neurons start firing at random, out of sync with the rest of his brain. Uh, this is very revealing. For, for, any, for anybody that wants to do research, you know, schizophrenia is the acceptance of imaginary friends as reality. The same thing happens with religious folks. All religious believe accept delusions as if they were real. There is no God. This bless America and uh, prayers and crap like that is an anomaly of the brain. It, they, God is does not exist. It's the creation of the brain. They should know that. We are product of a fuck. Okay, not the stork. We grew up, we have to feel, feed our brains, and then we start realizing we're going to die because we're crazy apes. And there, you have to invent God. Anything that we cannot understand you have to say, God did it, because we're crazy apes. But we're nothing but shit. We are, we are full of excreta. We are going to decompose. There's no God. We're going to stink and rot like the rest of animals, because we are animals. There is no God. Deal with the truth.
Pace di Roma.